DeRozan, Vucevic, and Kobe combined for an efficient 89 points, leading Chi-Town to their fourth straight convincing win. Despite Zach Levine being out, we're going to look at how the Dynasty-esque Bulls, led by their Jordan and DeMar, didn't miss a beat. With DeRozan becoming the only player other than Wilt Chamberlain to drop six straight games of scoring at least 35 points on 50 plus percent shooting, it's safe to say DeRozan is gaslighting the association and it's terrifying for opponents, so stay tuned to see how the Chicago Bulls are dominating like it's 1998. Right quick, only 12.1% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single video. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds, it makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll give you a follow back. Links in the description for those two platforms. An emotional reunion with his former legendary San Antonio Spurs head coach Greg Popovich saw Debo drop his third 40-piece of the year and the 16th 40-point game of his demarvelous NBA career. Along with matching Wilt Chamberlain in the stat I mentioned during the intro, DeMar became the first Chicago Bulls player since Michael Jordan to record six straight 35-plus point outings. Lost in the shuffle amidst that historically great scoring is how DeRozan's letting the game come to him by setting up his teammates. Through nine games in February, the Compton-born five-time All-Star is averaging six assists per game, whether it's kicking it out from the post after being triple teamed or laying nifty off-handed behind the back passes to the trailer, it's those double D dime droppings which force defenses to play DeMar for the pass, opening up the floor for wide open patented pull-up jumpers like this one right here. Through the game's first 16 plus minutes, San Antonio held him to a single field goal, but with how DeMar spent that time elusively facilitating, the opposing defense is still clueless about how he wants to go about his business. Coming off a pick set by the recently returned Derrick Jones Jr., 90% of players would have tossed it into the former dunk champ who's in the paint. However, DeRozan's well aware that his former teammate in Toronto and a reputable big man stopper in Jakob Pertl is playing DeMar for the pass and in a great position to recover to Jones Jr. He's kind of baiting DeMar into passing it there. So instead of throwing it in, Debo drives to the top of the key, spins using his left pivot foot while keeping his handle alive before fluently utilizing a Dirk fadeaway from the middle of the paint. It's that type of extremely advanced awareness and footwork which has allowed DeRozan to own defenders for really the last decade. Having said that, there's some fundamental differences in how DeMar's approach has elevated since his younger days with my hometown Toronto Raptors. To be fair, we still have to see how his current play in Chicago translates over to the postseason, but the comfortable, elusive way in which he's attacking defenses makes DeMar resemble a completely different player than the man who he was when he played in the six. As the kid in his mid-twenties that I witnessed carry my Raptors to three consecutive trips to the Eastern Conference semis and one playoff appearance of getting two wins from the finals, while he was an elite offensive player, there were many holes in his game, and he was struggling at times on and off the court. For one, it was obvious for defenders to figure out the spots DeMar wanted to get to, as well as to decipher if he wanted to shoot or pass. Additionally, with upper management in Toronto wanting him to become a three-point shooter, and with the pressure mounting for DeMar to finally carry the North over the top, DeRozan was the first one to admit his mental health had taken a hit. But after being traded to San Antonio, only to watch his former team win a title, DeMar built up a massive chip on his shoulder. While his Spurs team didn't have too much success, his second year in the Alamo City saw him become the first guard since Jordan to average over 20 points while shooting at least 53% from the field. But as he mentioned after his most recent 40 piece, the historic stats could mean less to him. There's really one thing, actually one word, on DeRozan's mind. Win. It's the only thing I know is win. Come that fourth quarter, my main priority is win at, at any, any cost. Finding themselves down six points against San Antonio to kick off the fourth quarter, Chicago desperately required a significant offensive spark. Even with Zach Levine in and out of the lineup with injuries all throughout February, as DeMar has all year, Mann put on his Superman cape, fueling Chi-Town to the W. DeRozan had 19 in the final frame, pushing him 66 ahead of Giannis Zetokounmpo for the most points scored in the fourth quarter. DeMar helped snap the Bulls out of their funk, 
as they outscored San Antonio by 17 in the final period to ultimately make it a double-digit win, winning 120-109 for their fourth straight W. DeRozan was stellar all around, notching seven dimes and making 16 of his 24 field goals. He struggled a bit with his shot for the first three quarters and even picked up a technical foul in the third. But once the fourth kicked off, Mann turned into an automatic bucket getter, easily getting to his spots, and no matter how many Spurs were in his vicinity, the NBA's fourth leading scorer carried the Bulls with superstar-esque execution. It was yet another showing which put chi shooting guard in the upper echelon of all-time Bulls players. Nikola Vucevic notched another double-double of 25 points and 16 rebounds as he continues his recent stretch of great offensive production. Man did struggle a bit from three-point land shooting just one of seven, but was efficient when it came to shooting in the paint and off post-ups. Vooch continues to impress after his early season troubles. He looks like a completely different player now in terms of his confidence, and with Zach Levine out, the Bulls need this version of Vucevic to keep going. Kobe White had 11 points in the first quarter to kickstart Chicago and finish with 24 on the game to go along with six assists and five rebounds. He struggled with foul trouble, but came up with some key plays down the stretch, including a dagger three with 49 seconds left. Ayo Dosumu had some foul trouble and even picked up his sixth one late in the fourth, but he still finished with 12 to go along with four assists and three rebounds, plus solid defense on DeJounte Murray. As they did against Minnesota and OKC, the Bulls' defense stepped up in key moments. Chicago allowed only 20 points in the fourth quarter, outscoring their opponents by 17. They forced the Spurs into four turnovers after San Antonio committed only three in the first 36 minutes. Chicago was flying to the ball and also did their best to pound the glass on defense, along with altering shots at the bucket. As we all know, they continue to navigate that end of the floor without Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso, so it's nice to see the Bulls have another solid closing defensive performance. Javante Green was the only starter not to score in double digits with just seven points, but he made an impact in many other ways. He had nine rebounds, including four of them on the offensive end. The Bulls continue to benefit from his constant hustle and energy, which often leads to second chance points or easy dunks at the rim. While they got just 12 points off the bench, the Bulls still got good minutes from two of their key guys in Troy Brown Jr., who had eight points but also contributed with six rebounds. While Derek Jones Jr. continues to work his way back from a finger injury, he had seven boards and four points, including a key basket in the fourth quarter where he also drew a foul. Tony Bradley and Matt Thomas played sparingly, combining for just 10 minutes total, as the injury-riddled Bulls are keeping a very tight rotation. As a team, Chicago shot 52.3% from the field and 42% from downtown. They continue to be near automatic at the line, hitting 18 of their 21 attempts. Maybe most impressively, the Bulls thoroughly out-rebounded San Antonio by a wide 53-33 margin. Whether it's the rebounding, scoring, or defense, what's impressing you the most about this Chi-Town four-game winning streak? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top five commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Devin Sedotal, who says, in my opinion, this could be the Suns' year to win it all. They've been playing great basketball all year and have the perfect combination of players to succeed. They came very close last year, and with experience, I think this could be the year for them to get over the hump. Pause to read the rest of Devin's take. Appreciate every answer. This was D-Flow. I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.